Welcome to episode five of the Shite Guide to Provo, an unofficial history of Amsterdam's counterculture revolution of the mid 60s. So up until now, there's been a lot of shite talk and jive talking about the, the group of youngsters who attacked the government and society through their guerrilla street theater called Happenings, the bizarre and irrational artwork of the time. A happening in Holland by the Provos, today's rowdiest protest movement with a freer tomorrow for their cause. A happening is a happening is a happening is a happening is a happening. Everything is happening. But what the fuck is a happening? Why is dancing around a statue art? Why is chucking a chicken at a princess art? Why is getting her face smashed in with a bat in art? Well, we're going to get into it. There goes the neighborhood, here come the provos Working for the man is a no-no Staying on the low-low, playing with the po-po When you're with the crew, you're never gonna roll solo Ooh. There goes the neighborhood, here come the provos Trying to give the world back its mojo The people with no hope need to go loco Here come the provos to fuck up the whole show This is a provo thing no art is created in a vacuum. Art in any form draws its inspiration and foundation from all other art that has come before it because it's a never-ending journey, a continuous passing of the torch that stretches back in time to the cavemen and evolves with every new artist and audience. Art is what separates us from the monkeys, even if some of us are still prone to flinging our own shit at our enemies when the mood strikes us. The 1960s, where our story takes place, was a tumultuous age of change, when a new generation was growing up in the shadow of the greatest war in the history of our planet, and new questions needed new answers and new art. The provosts of Amsterdam were attacking the state and society with the happening. An ethereal, uh, how would you say, <laughs> like it, it was like a, an interactive guerrilla street theatre that was so unquantifiable that it drove the authorities insane in their attempt to fight it. So let's discuss the happening. The first ever happening can be traced back to New York City in 1959 when some spicy boy called Alan Capra was feeling confined by the limitations of the regular old art gallery. He began developing a technique called the action collage, which began incorporating more and more of the senses, visual, audio, touch, smell, movement, until the art gallery became more of a general environment and began blurring the lines between the viewer and the art. Instead of going to a gallery to view a painting, Painting, the gallery came to you, the painter slapped you with his brush and you yourself ended up within the artwork itself. As his vision grew, so did the scale of the art, and soon he abandoned galleries altogether as his abstract art burst out into the streets and began incorporating the real world surroundings as well as the spectators. The happening depends on the audience to complete the artwork as their reaction is in itself an integral ingredient in this goofy soup. No audience, no art. Once the line was blurred between the artist and the spectator, everything happened. The happening happened. Much like an experimental virus bursting out of a Wuhan biolab, once the happening uh, like escaped its original confines, it could be contained by neither man nor beast, and it spread like wildfire. And uh, it transcended borders and continents, and it reached the Netherlands in the year of 1962. Now, the happening is not the easiest concept um, to explain, but as we go through the series, we're going to check out many examples of the happenings that the provosts would stage that were to blur the lines between politics and art, between real life and the ethereal world. <laughs> Forget all the standard art forms. Don't paint pictures, don't make poetry, don't build architecture, don't arrange dances, don't write plays, don't compose music, don't make movies. And above all, don't think you'll get a happening out of putting all these together. The point is to make something new, something that doesn't even remotely remind you of culture. Make it unsure even to yourself if the happening is life or art. Art has always been different from the world's affairs. Now you've got to work hard to keep it all blurry. So this is the Jordan neighbor of Amsterdam's inner city. 
Now a bougie borough bursting with bountiful boutiques and busty blondes bouncing on bikes. It was once a rough working class neighborhood built for the city's factory workers and it was the site of many happenings. Let's take an early example of the lunacy of a happening, the ice happening. In one particularly cold winter, when the canals froze over, a space invading painter called Fred Vessels decided to open every window and turn on every tap in his house until he flooded it and transformed it into an ice rink. He then invited the neighbours to pop around to have a skating party. Does it make sense? No. Is it a weird and wacky activity to witness? Yes. That's a happening. So let's jump right into one particular happening when the art form itself would take on a new dimension. When the police rocked up to a happening <laughs> like a big body bunch of bollockses and through their violence against the provost they temporarily became artistes, they became actors driving the happening. They started swinging their batons and in doing so they were temporarily transformed into artists creating a happening within a happening. So yeah, I understand it's confusing, so let's actually get into it and dip our toes into the choppy waters of a mid-60s afternoon. March 19th, 1960 motherfucking six. Nine days after the royal wedding became the day of anarchy. Here on the lovely Prinzenkracht, right across the way, once stood the Pollock and Van Gennep Gallery. And one day, in 1966, what was once uh, a regular space for art to be viewed, by like, uh, you know, by a customer in a gallery. It was uh, on one day caught up in a, a countercultural revolution and it was transformed from a traditional gallery into the new and bizarre form of interactive artistic experience in the form of the happening. Early on March 19th, crowds of hip motherfuckers gathered to view an exhibition of photos of the police brutality that had happened the previous week when the provost had attacked the royal wedding with their smoke bombs. Uh, and it, it was basically at the time causing the powers that be to beat the shite out of everyone in the streets for having dared to question their authority. So the street behind us right here was jam-packed and in amongst the crowds, in amongst the tussle of cool cats, uh, a saucy provo by the name of Auka Burisma decided to unleash the white chicken plan. Right over there. In the provo parlance of the day, chicken was the word of choice for the police. Blue chickens, the original street nickname for the police, was co-opted by the provos into white chickens in their white chicken plan. This particular plan aimed to change the police from merely protectors of the status quo and power structures into social workers, again foreshadowing current events that we're seeing play out today. The plan stated for the police to truly benefit society, they should be out on the streets carrying chicken, water and condoms to be distributed to needy citizens. So, Auka rocked up to the gallery with 20 chickens with the plan to release them and order them to march to Vietnam, which at the time was being attacked by the Nazis. Or not, not, the, not the Nazis, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the Americans. So uh, the, the chickens would be released under the assumption that when they reached Vietnam, there would be peace. I mean, it's not the worst plan ever, considering the alternative at the time was just to firebomb every village in the country of Vietnam until the locals accepted their freedom. So anyway, a nice afternoon 
of revolutionary artistic hijinks was afoot until the police rolled up from over this direction and they beat the shite out of everyone in sight, as was the style at the time. Some of the crowd dispersed up the street this way to check out another exhibition on the Heringracht, uh, which was showing videos of March the 10th, you know, the, the royal wedding. And it turned out to be a 3D, fully interactive movie experience because the cops, predictably, pulled up outside and started beating the shite out of everyone in sight there as well. I'm the Popo Polizzi, coming for my feet, see. Here come the Polizzi, the Popo, coming for the Provost. Here come the Popo Polizzi, to stop my exhibit, see. Oh, here come the Polizzi, the Popo, oh no, the Popo. So let this sink in, right? The Provost hosts a viewing of photos of police brutality, which then gets broken up by police brutality, right here, which then itself also gets photographed. So then they need to head to another viewing of uh, a video of police brutality, which is then also broken up by police brutality. And it was captured on video there as well. So down the street here, live on the scene, was a lean, mean movie-making machine by the name of Louis van Gastere, who was there uh, to capture the ludicrous events on film. Their clashes with the police have sometimes been violent. Louis Gasfern made a film about one of them which has been banned in Holland. And the capturing of provo happenings in the media and, uh, and like, you know, through, through newspapers and magazines, on the TV and the radio and film, it was integral to the, to the movement's power as bearing witness to the brutality of the state was meant to open the eyes of the public to the madness of life. Now, watch this uh, scene, for instance. There were a few thousand people. Out of this crowd, suddenly came one man, just he walked towards his bike and wanted to pick up his bike, as he told me later. And there was one policeman, this policeman identifying this man coming out of this crowd with the whole crowd, just started beating as he was, this policeman, as I see here on this picture, full of fear, but the whole thing ran out of hands. And in the first slow motion sequence, you see it here, there comes the student, we see what's happening. The policeman makes a gesture that he wants to beat him. He raises his hand to cover his head. Then the other policemen are coming in and they all go on beating. When you get a crack of the bottom, that's hard. When you get a slap in the wagon, that's hard. When you're hanging at the happening, pulling and a dragging, knock flat on your arse, that's hard. When you get a crack of the bottom, that's hard. When you get a slap in the wagon, that's hard. When you're hanging at the happening, pulling and a dragging, knock flat on your arse, that's hard. Here are certain democratic values in danger. This citizen, any citizen, you, me, have right upon a certain way of living, a certain way of life. So Luigi headed home and he blasted through a, a quick edit. And later on that night, the film was broadcast on the TV to a bemused public. The happening was being beamed right into the living rooms of the middle classes. And it was apparent that the pop art revolution was picking up speed. The, uh, the film was immediately followed by a speech by the mayor of Amsterdam, Van Hal, who was asking for calm. But the provost didn't want calm, but they did have a list of demands. The provost asked for a meeting and gave their demands. First was the removal of Mayor Van Hal and Police Commissioner Van der Molen from office. 
Next was justice for the recent police brutality. Then an overhaul of the police department. And finally an election of the mayor, as until then they were chosen by the monarchy. An insane situation that allowed kings and queens with their pure bloodline to have authority over the citizens with regular dirty commoner blood. They did not have their demands met and instead were banned from displaying any kind of political messages at protests. Rule Van Down, the founder and the master theorist of the Provo movement, called this whole saga a Spiegelbeld Provocati, a mirror image provocation. And uh, this new uh, kind of, you know, police brutality situation, it signaled a society being shaken violently and roused from its slumber. By now, the lines between art and real life, between images and action, were becoming blurred. And in the next couple of chapters, we're going to delve deep into more severe provocaties.